All right. What can I help you with? Yeah. So, uh, I'm currently like taking the self-taught path, um, right now, uh, sort of stepped aside from school for the year and I'm just focusing on, on programming and I've made some good progress with regards to projects and stuff and learning various like, um, web technologies and, and things like that. And just sort of was like finishing up, um, sort of a larger scale project and was thinking like pretty soon here, like maybe I'll start, um, applying for jobs. And so I was like, I should get started on found that, um, yeah, jumping into some questions right away on, on leak code, like, um, yeah, I was just like overwhelmed. Like, I, I guess like thinking about it, like, um, for the past like couple of weeks or so, like, I think when I started out, I, I figured like, you know, if I focus in on projects and stuff, like I'll gain like enough fundamentals to where at least some of the easier questions and stuff like, um, should be like pretty doable. Um, but as I was like jumping into even some easier questions or like ones that have, um, like higher acceptance rate, um, I found like, I was like totally stumped on some of these questions and even to the point where like I'd work on it for an hour um, and then like read like through a few solutions and um, just like can't quite even understand what's going on in those solutions at that point. So, yeah, so I was feeling pretty, um, pretty defeated at that point with, with regards to that. Um, since then I, I have um, started like, an online course. I, I paid for it. I usually, I try not to pay for things where I can, but uh, I, I sort of gave in on this one and, and that's helping just like going through some of the fundamentals, like basic data structures and some algorithms and stuff. But uh, I'm still finding like some of those, some of those questions. Um, yeah. Are, are sort of stumping me and uh, it's just very overwhelming. I would say. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Um, you, so I guess a couple things you mentioned that you don't usually pay for resources. Why not? Um, I just am of the philosophy that you, like more often than not, you can get something almost as good uh, for free. And I also like generally have a lot of confidence in myself to, to sort of fill in the gaps. Um, and usually that works for me pretty well, but yeah, I mean, obviously like if it comes down to it, like I'm willing to, to pay for something if I feel like that's what I need to do. But yeah. Okay, fair enough. You mentioned you uh, were taking a break from school. Are you going through um, anything like programming related in school or what are you doing? No, so it was kind of a big switch. I did a couple years of school. Um, I was in linguistics for like my second year um, and I liked that. But uh, basically what I found is like school just kind of kills the joy um, of everything for me. <laughs> Um, and I just don't enjoy learning that way. Um, and yeah, basically like found that like some people actually get jobs, um, in programming self-taught. So I decided to give it a shot. Yeah. <clears throat> gotcha. Okay. So I think ultimately it sounds like your goal is to become a professional software engineer. Have you thought about, um, as a professional software engineer, what you want to build, what you want to focus on? Like, do you want to do web development, mobile, front end, back end? Yeah, so my focus has been mostly on like front end web development. Um, okay. I'm familiar with some back end stuff as well, but like I would say front end is where I'm most confident. Have you been through any interviews for front end positions? No, not at all at this point. Yeah. Okay. And so your goal with the learning data structures and algorithms, I'm assuming, is going to be because people have told you you got to learn it? Yeah, basically like just for interviews and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, I forgot if you mentioned, have you built any projects with, uh, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've built a couple of smaller ones. I just finished up one that's a bit like larger scale. And then I'm going to be starting on another one that'll be sort of in between pretty soon as well. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. So typically, um, like, so we only have probably like 20 minutes left. There's no way I'm right. going to be able to dig into like where specifically you're struggling. Cause what, what's yeah. happening most likely is, um, you're lacking some sort of fundamental concepts of whatever those data structures and algorithms utilize. Right. I think mm -hmm. 
so it could be you're jumping into too difficult of problems and you think that you understand some of those basic problems better than you actually do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to make assumptions because I, again, I haven't seen your code, but right. chances are you might be diving too deep too quickly. You got to go back through fundamental concepts. I think a lot of the project work that you're doing can really help reinforce those fundamental concepts. And you mm -hmm. can literally like, when you're going through course or, or free, whatever you're doing, you can literally just build small features to reinforce what you're learning and reinforce those foundations. Um, right, yeah. Something hints at me, just because I, I'm not even going to say because it's uh, something you said. Usually it's just you got to build a, a more solid foundation. Now, the problem is there is a disconnect when people, even when they dive into like a big reputable course or whatever even if it's paid whatever and it's it's uh really heavy on the foundations and people are recommending mm -hmm. it left and right this is a really good foundational course then mm -hmm. they try to dive into data structures and algorithms and it doesn't transfer over as well as they think it does i think it's very difficult to go through a lot of traditional coursework and even a little project work and then switch to data structures and algorithms usually it happens too early but that a lot of your learnings they don't transition that smoothly and usually it's because data structures and algorithms that that type of knowledge is used to solve very specific problems especially when you get into leak code problems usually yeah. very specific problems that you haven't really encountered in the wild yet you don't really know why you're learning it you just know you got to learn it because they're going to be tested over it right and yeah. so i find that you could tackle this and i'll give you a couple other strategies as well but you got to solidify your foundations a bit more and mm -hmm. start with like very basic data structures start with yeah. the very fundamental stuff um and like you know just basic stuff like have you ever built like um, a queue for example yeah I, okay I i'm just curious like what data structure do you feel like you're just not able to tackle the challenge or when you see the solution with a specific data structure implemented do you feel like you don't really understand how that data structure works so i would say like like before this course that I'm doing, like it definitely, there was like points. I think one of the questions I looked at um, where, where I was saying like, you know, I looked at the solution. I didn't know what was going on. Um, I think that one was like, I think it was like some sort of dynamic programming solution. And I didn't even know what that was at that point. So I was totally and utterly confused. So that was part of it. Like just not being familiar with some of those concepts. I would say like, like the course I'm going through really is like, super super basic like most people online were saying like it's not worth paying for it just because like i mean most of those people were coming out of university programs where you know they already learned that stuff like within the first few years of their program um but i figured like that was actually perfect for me because like that's where i want to start um so i am feeling like as i go through each of these concepts like i'm feeling pretty comfortable like i don't know i covered like merge sort and like, if I do a problem where it's like literally just like implement merge sort or whatever, like I can do that reasonably, like comfortably and like, and I don't feel like I'm misunderstanding the concept there, but then it's like, then the difficulty is like, sort of, they present another, another problem that's sort of tangentially related, not like directly maybe utilizing that algorithm exactly, but like sort of some aspect of the concept. And then it's like. Yeah, it's just, it's really hard. I, I think a lot of times, like, I'll sort of come up with a um, sort of an idea that makes sense, um, but then just implementing it in the code is, sorry, my cat, <laughs> my it's okay. cat stuck in here. <laughs> um, implementing it in the code is uh, a little, it, yeah, it's, it's tough. I think part of it is also that it's just especially frustrating for me um, with the data structures and, and algorithms and stuff. I think I can like do like bug fixing and stuff like that in a project that I'm working on um, and not mind like messing around with the same bug for like an hour or two and just to finally get it. But uh, I think with DSA, like it sort of feels like I'm not, I, I don't know, like it's a lot more frustrating for me. I think it's partly that I, I don't know what I'm doing it for. I'm just solving a problem for the sake of sure. solving a problem, right? Yeah, so 
and you, you don't really have that context of where it's going to be used so like you it mm -hmm. sounds like you're trying to be practical you're learning things that you need to learn and it sounds mm -hmm. like you probably supplemented a lot of what you're learning as you try to build more and more complex projects i think that's a very effective yeah. way to grow as a software engineer especially initially um mm -hmm. but now you're tasked with this like arbitrary goal i don't think i've ever used merge sort I, i've never even been tested over that i i practiced it a long time ago but yeah. like when you it's very frustrating because you probably maybe some of the frustration is coming from like trying to learn something you're like what is the point you kind of handed towards that and it feels mm -hmm. like a waste of time sometimes right i can yeah. i can tell you a few things one front-end engineering roles i've it, someone in the comments might tell me oh yeah i've experienced it but i've never heard of a merge yeah. sort being asked for for a front-end role a mm -hmm. lot of front-end roles they're going to make sure that you really have your fundamentals done your foundation down yeah. um so what i would do before you dive any deeper into data structures and algorithms i would yeah. make sure you have your foundations down mm -hmm. and build some projects apply go through the interview process fail at it or succeed whatever but like get that feedback early because i yeah. feel like you're you're kind of just diving into this un these unknown waters and you don't know how far you need to dive down and usually exactly that, yeah. that's going to be established once you get some of that feedback earlier um mm -hmm. I, here's here's the thing a lot of advice you get to learn data structures and algorithms comes from people that went through a full stack course where mm. they where a lot of uh, data structures and algorithm challenges are given to these students to practice because they're trying to prepare them for both front end and back end positions so i would just be wary about taking yes. a lot of that advice what you can do though as you're going through project work um you might for example one thing i like i never thought i'd use recursion ever mm. but i learned it and it was a very tough concept for me to learn but yeah. i didn't use it until my first position where it's like let's go ahead and scrap jquery it's a heavy library and it there was a practical reason to get it out of our production code base and we're just going to extract a, a few different methods we'll just build custom methods right that can mm -hmm. do what jquery does and so i utilized jquery and recursion to be able not i didn't utilize jquery i utilized recursion to be able to just recursively look through all the elements i needed to and extract what i needed to so that was a practical use and that really helped reinforce my understanding of recursion so if you really yeah. want to understand data structures and algorithms and kind of just what you're hinting at and kind of the feel and vibe that i'm getting from you try to think of a practical use case for what you're learning and apply it i think you're going to both reinforce it but also you're going to have that extra context that's that might stand out to you in some of mm -hmm. these dsa challenges it might sound right. relatable you're like you know what i kind of did something like this let's go ahead and try it and see if it actually solves this problem because i and that's how you start blending your practical experience and your practical knowledge and having that extra context giving purpose for learning this data structure algorithm or whatever i think mm -hmm. that's going to be a much smoother process for you yeah okay yeah i i i definitely um feel that like with that most recent project that i finished up um get involved like actually like displaying like a tree structure on the page and so i was like yeah using recursion and using like D um dfs and bfs and stuff like that and it was a lot easier to like get into that and try and learn those things um just because it was like okay like clearly this is directly solving a problem and you know after that i feel a lot more comfortable with things like recursion and stuff yeah <clears throat> that's good yeah so what you were saying earlier um about like like are you, do you suggest that i should like just start applying for jobs and just see what happens in those interviews and like use that as like a gauge for like where am i actually at with regards to like what i need to know once you built you talked about you kind of uh labeled the next project you're going to be working on like a, kind of like a medium difficulty like when once yeah. you get a full project up um mm -hmm. that is your own that isn't based on a tutorial based project once you get that project up get it on your resume you're just mm -hmm. going to list your portfolio projects on your resume and start applying now now that's going to be a very ineffective way to find positions it's a cold application right. strategy there are way there are way other or I shouldn't say there are better strategies there are other strategies that you should supplement cold applying with 
And that's right. diving into networking and going, even participating yeah. in a hackathon. Like I have tons of videos on that. But oh, yeah. what I would do is apply once you get that project up, where it kind of showcases what you can do currently as a developer and apply to those positions or apply to like a few different positions. I would start with positions where if you have any sort of background in your old industry, you know, if you, I don't know if you were a lifeguard, you were in healthcare, you were in finance, et cetera, you can build apps mm -hmm. around that old industry and you can blend those two and companies yeah. like that will more seriously consider you for an entry level position in my experience, but apply to a few positions each week as you slowly build up your project work and then continue to, um shape what you're doing day to day based on okay i got i applied for 100 positions no like i got no calls back whatsoever no one cares about me so something's wrong with my strategy 100 calls no responses it's probably ineffective is it my resume let's go ahead and have a software engineer look at my resume is it my portfolio let's have a software engineer look at my portfolio is it uh, and but then once you get a call back and then you get that coding challenge it's like okay what coding challenge did I get? Um, where did I trip up over this? Did I trip up? Was it the coding challenge? Was it my soft skills? Was it my how personable I was with the recruiter, right? And right. so you're not really going to be able to shape where you are. You're not going to be able to shape your trajectory or where you currently stand with yeah. finding a job until you get that feedback. You don't know what feedback you're going to get, but yes, apply a little bit early. Start small heavily focus on yeah. project work to reinforce everything that you're doing and then eventually over the months you're going to scale that and apply for more positions put more emphasis on the job search and then just yeah. pull back just a little bit from project work it's still going to be a, a big chunk of your day but yeah. you know that ratio is going to shift that's what i would do okay cool yeah no i think definitely like um I, yeah i have the tendency to just be like okay like wait until like i'm ready 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 like until i'm totally perfect um and what is yeah, that line like where's that line in the sand when are you perfect enough to apply for a job um well i sort of pulled that line back a few times as my sort of um timeline has uh gone out of whack but um i guess like once i have like a few like at least like three projects that i can put on there confidently on a, on a resume and then um and also feel like reasonably comfortable with DSA, I guess was where, was where that line was at. What's reasonably comfortable with it. How do you figure that out? Um, I don't know. Like, I guess like I can sort of look at most like easy problems and, and feel like not, um, not totally stumped or what's the line for the hardest, easiest problem. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to figure know. it out, right? Yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah. And yeah. that, that's my point, right? So that line is never going to be solidified. And you're kind of showing traits of like leaning a little bit more on like you're essentially what a lot of us are. You're leaning on perfectionism. And that's something that you have to completely destroy, right? It's you're never going to there's never going to be that line of the sand where you feel like, OK, I'm good to go. That, that doesn't exist. I, I have yet to meet someone that's like 100 percent confident with that line. Um, I would start with like one project one project you're pretty proud of that represents your skills like i said and i would start applying for from there um so yeah. that that's kind of the strategy but i did want to add one other thing yeah you can since you really want to go for free resources one thing hopefully you're utilizing this but if yeah. you find and this is probably going to answer your question specifically if you're finding that this medium to hard type of problem i'm just struggling with i don't get i don't understand why i got to learn it it's just arbitrary um yeah. like where what where was i supposed to learn you know like if you're asking all those questions you really can't connect it with the foundations or bring context into that type of problem where like it makes sense you're going to utilize this at some day uh, for some project right. if you if that bridges it doesn't exist what you can do is just use chat gpt and i would literally ask hey here's the challenge um i'm not yeah. understanding it um i don't want you to solve it for me but i want you to go ahead and list out like foundational concepts that i should be going over list out foundational concepts i'm going to go ahead and reinforce those concepts but i also want you to list out give me give me a couple challenges that are a little bit easier that'll kind of bridge my skill level into this challenge and you could even say yeah. and also you know what give me a small project i can tackle that's actually mm -hmm. going to utilize this why should why the hell should i care about this problem right you could do all yeah. that stuff and have it build out in like a, a little mini curriculum for you 
to mm -hmm. bridge that gap. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at ChatGPT and using that for some some sort of programming related things, but I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, that sounds really helpful. It'll make it more fun too. You can even tell it. Yeah. Like make this fun. I'm bored. Make it fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. That sounds really good. Okay. Um, any other questions? Um, no, I think, I think that's all. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, well hey, yeah, it's been really helpful. Thank you. Good, good. I'm glad. I hope it helps other people too. I appreciate you mm -hmm. coming on. Not a lot of people are willing to put themselves out there like this, so I'm sure other people are going to appreciate it. But yeah, um, sure. yeah. Daniel, thanks so much for coming on. It was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, sweet. Thank you. You too.